Good morning, class. There's about two or three problems that you're doing today. And to be honest, I think the, the biggest challenge will be making sure that you know how to use Desmos correctly to display and analyze statistical data, uh, bivariate statistical data. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of those tools and make sure you're comfortable with all of them. Um, Desmos is a, is a great platform, and I do encourage you to... Uh, if you're not logged in, to log in, you're just using your school district account so that the graphs that you create um, don't go away. You can you could come back to them and use them again. Um, if you set up the data, you can also share them so that other students um, maybe don't have to, to log in as well. Um, so I'm going to enter a quick data set here. Here's a table, and I'll just enter the values 2, 5, whoops. Let's get this right. You have to have numlock on two, five, six, nine, and and twelve. All right, and then just some corresponding y values. And I'm completely making this up, but I'm going to go one, two, four, um, five, and seven. Okay, so this is a decent, right? You can see in the graph window. I can see all my data points. Just a, a good thing to make sure you know how to do is to change the x and y axis independently. Um, yes, you can zoom in or out, and that seems to be kind of problematic on, on Chromebook touchpads, but you can do that. The other thing that you can do is you can uh, bring your cursor to the x-axis, and once it's sitting on the x-axis, if you hold the shift key down, you can see the icon change. At this point, you can shrink or grow just the x-axis. Same thing on the y-axis, you can put it here and you can shrink or grow the y-axis. So this is a fine fine display of this data set. The other thing that would be nice is um, making sure that you know how to label the x and y-axis appropriately. So if in a problem you're told that x is, for example, the distance you are, from an object and y is the field of view and you would put that and put the inch the units in if it was inches or feet I'm just gonna right now just say um, x-axis so that you can just see how to change it so it's this wrench once you open the wrench up you can type x-axis here whatever you type here will show up then this is y-axis there we go a um, couple other things I do like the I, I like the arrows on that's not a default thing but there there we go okay so to create the line of best fit uh, the key sequence you'll use is essentially we're typing in y equals mx plus b but we need to tell it we want it, the equation that bridges this set of data these y1 values with this in, these input values so what we do is we say y1 so i'm just literally typing the number y and then one it automatically makes it a subscript and it tells me there are five elements in that list and then i hit the tilde this this symbol it's near the escape key in the upper left hand corner and then i type m x one and then plus uh, b and there is my line of fit. And I can see the two parameters for this line. So if I was going to write down the equation of the line, it's y equals 0 0.6, if I was writing to the nearest tenth. So 0.6x minus 0.34. And I can see all those things here. I can see my y-intercept is at negative 0.34, and I can see my x-intercept is at 0.559. So looking fabulous. Um, of course, I can turn off the, the data plot. I can uh, turn off the, that looks great, great. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can ask it to calculate and plot all of the residuals. So when I click this button, it immediately created a list of all the residuals for each of the points. And you can see if a point has a negative residual like this one does, it's showing that it's residual is below the line, positives are above the line. And then I can see these points, right? This data point at 6 has a residual of 0.687. So when I look at that, I know that this is positive and this length is 0.687. I can click on this and I see that it's, uh, it's I, here's that data point, but I can click on this one and I see, yes, its residual is negative because it's below the line and it's negative 0.139. If I want to, <clears throat> if I'm asking for a residual point plot to be included, I don't want to see the data and I don't want to see the line. I want to see this. So this is a residual plot. This plot just shows me the residuals only. Um, if I want, I could zoom this in better. 
and this is a better residual plot and I like it because it tells me I can see that all of my residuals are when within one unit, a positive or negative above there. Um, I think this is the largest residual, that's 0.74. This one is smaller at 0.68. So if I was going to give a quote unquote margin of error, I could say here's my line of best fit, and then I would report the plus or minus uh, 0.7. And we've been screenshotting uh, these in items to get them into to uh, into either Google Docs or Google Slides. A, a better way to do that is actually to just use their built-in share share tool. So if I click Share Graph, it says, "Okay, you want to share it? Um, you can just copy a link to this image. You can embed it. You could print it, or you can just say Export Image. Once you click Export Image, a couple things you can." change right right now it's a medium square if I wanted to I could make it a medium rectangle um, I could make it a large rectangle um, I don't want a large rectangle I want a medium rectangle and then you can change the thickness of the lines the lines can be medium or they can be thick this is nice it's really bold it'll show well it'll print well on a screen once you have that you can I can right click this I think you guys can do something similar and just hit copy image or you could download the image and then insert it from wherever you downloaded it to. So this is a great way to get at your graphs. Again, let's go back just as a as a review. Let's go back to not having the residual plot. So I'm going to turn off the residuals, turn on my data, turn on the line of fit, and and then I'm going to change the scale of the y-axis and I'm going to bring the the origin back down to this corner. So again, this is a great graph ready to go in for me to discuss and talk about um, and I can grab this graph and share it uh, just like that. Okay so then the problems that we're doing today are 48, 49, and 50 from our ebook and uh, they're pretty straightforward actually and th they've done probably more than I think they should for setting these activities up. Um, you'll notice that each one has a Desmos e-tool already set up and you could just go ahead and click it and open it in a separate window or if you're okay with that I think you could just pop these open yeah these will just pop open up in here I think it would be difficult to perhaps copy the graph here but um, the questions are repeated here uh, what they're asking you to do is repeated here and what I'm looking for are responses to every single um, prompt or question. So if you're asked to do something, include that into today's report. If you're asked a question, uh, type a response to that. I would recommend just sending me a single Google Doc. Um, you can spin that up and share it with friends if a couple of you are going to work together remotely. But th what I'm looking for at the end of the day are your answers to 48, 49, and 50. And I will be available all day today. Uh, Again, you just open the link up that is uh, at the top of the classroom. My intent is to leave that meeting open throughout the entire day. Um, if you have questions about the test that's coming up and you'd like to discuss some of those things, that would be wonderful. And uh, uh, I hope that you find today enjoyable. And that I hope that you find that you're successful today and that you understand how to use Desmos. I think that's a great tool. It's a great replacement um, for the, our TI-84 calculators, and uh, I will talk to you later.